Welcome to my garden office or my shed office. It's just an insulated shed in the garden. I've done some other videos on this, how I keep it warm, how it's insulated, just so you can have a little look around. Um, I feel it'd be particularly relevant because a lot of people may be thinking about moving to like a garden building, like a shed and insulating that and working from a shed or may already be in one. And as it's getting to winter, it's probably getting a little bit colder now. I spend at least eight hours a day in here. I mean, I get in here first thing in the morning most days, unless I'm sort of working through the night doing something. Um, so sometimes I'm doing a night shift, but generally I'm here during the day. So a few things really make a difference, like a comfy chair. This chair, I think was over a hundred quid, but a good chair, you're gonna be sitting at your desk for a long period of time generally. So just spend the money on a comfortable chair. It makes a huge difference. A good mouse and keyboard, a nice screen. I mean, that screen's ridiculous. It's 43 inches, but for what I do, it makes my life so much easier. I'd say it's definitely worth spending some money on some proper lighting. So if you can see, I've got a nice full height lamp here and there's actually a, a little table lamp there, which is on top of my printer. Just a bit of ambience. I don't, I've got lighting around the rest of the room, but I don't really have that on most of the time. I prefer it to just be in the area I'm working. You don't want it too bright, otherwise it's awful. If you're spending a lot of time in your office, you've got to be warm, you've got to be comfortable. It's got to be a nice environment. So that's why the lighting's important, your chair's important. I use an expensive mouse and keyboard, or fairly expensive, quite especially picky about my keyboard, because that's what keeps you in contact. It's like your the thing between you and your computer. That's what makes you work. So if you've got an awful, keyboard your productivity is going to be rubbish so it's just things like that anything that can make your day less of a faff because a lot of people are going to be working from home it could be for the next few months it could be for the next few years it's I don't see a reason why a lot of companies couldn't just have people working from home permanently if the productivity is still there there's no reason for it it's like a startup you don't need an office now you could just go well I'll hire globally because it's proven anyone can work from anywhere as long as you've got a good internet connection. I've done a video on internet connections incidentally because I've used Wi-Fi extenders which are a bit intermittent because everyone's going to be doing Zoom meetings or some kind of video conferencing at the moment and if someone's cutting out one of those meetings it's annoying. It's fine if it's someone that's not really involved but if someone that's like the, the speaker, the main person hosting the meeting and you can't tell what they're saying and there's 10 of you on the call you're like this is wasting my time. Currently I'm just using a cable. I've run an ethernet cable down the garden. I've had no problems, apart from when my neighbor cut through it. But apart from that, I've had no problems, which is just, I, I should have done it to begin with, to be honest. I couldn't recommend anything more. It's a, it's a complete faff running a cable because you'll run it under the floors and everything, but it's worth doing just to make my life easier, especially because I'm uploading YouTube videos every night. So I don't want a signal that's broken come in the next morning and it says, Upload failed, you know, great. There are some nice touches in this room. For example, all the windows have curtains. It is a recording studio, so the curtains are sort of for an acoustic treatment point of view, but also from an insulation point of view. Also, it's kind of good to have curtains just so if anyone is trying to break into your shed, if you've got the curtains closed, they can't see what's in there. They may be less likely to break in. From a security point of view, I'd recommend building window boxes like I've made, which sort of slot into the frame and lock into the uh, actual walls. I know that sounds a bit overkill, but it's a recording studio, so I use those from a sound point of view, so soundproofing, but it's also for security for me, because if someone smashed the windows, I mean, if I was breaking into my own shed, I would not go through the windows, because I know how I've built them. It's all glued and screwed. I, I wouldn't go through the window. I don't know how I'd get in now, actually. Now I've redone the roof. I genuinely don't know how I'd get in here. If I, if I had locked my keys in here somehow, which is impossible, but say that happened, don't know what I'd do. <laughs> anyway, that's for the security video I'm doing. Now the heating hasn't been on yet. I know that because I haven't actually plugged it in since about March. I've got this thermometer temperature thing which has a little sensor that you put out the window and it tells you the temperature inside and the temperature wherever that sensor is. I've put it out the window so I know the temperature. 17 degrees in here and it's gone up to nine. When I came in here earlier, it said it was minus 40. I thought, probably not, but <laughs> it's a bit rubbish, but I have sort of slammed it in a window, so maybe the wires are a bit ruined, but most of the time it's fine. But I would recommend this just, I don't know, it's an interesting piece of information. I've done a video on how I keep this heated. It's basically a ceramic heater plugged into um, a thermostat on a wall socket. So when it drops below a certain temperature, the heating kicks on. And the reason I've chosen a ceramic heater, I just think it's less likely to be a fire hazard. And as it's a timber building, 
that's a concern for me. Just having an outdoor space where you can get away from all the distractions of your house, for example, your kids, because you're trying to have a meeting and your kids are running around, it's a little bit awkward, but at the moment, I think everyone's sort of half the time homeschooling and the rest of the time, you know, schools are open at the moment, but they may not be. It's just somewhere you can get away, get your head down and do some work. It makes a big difference just having your space where you can get set up, you can crack on and you can go in and then deal with the kids or you and your other half, you can swap. So one of you can come down here and the other one goes in the house. You can just do your meeting. So one of them's got the quiet space and someone else has to sort of stick with the noise, you know, try and have a meeting with Moana in the background. We've all been there. Let me have a coffee. Oh, that's so nice. I'm gonna do some videos on security for your shed. Um, just because a garden building isn't the most secure really. I mean, you can do things like, like cameras everywhere. That's always a good idea, like I've done. Loads of good locks. I'm gonna go through different types of locks you can use on things. But if it's an, like an actual shed with a normal shed door, you wanna replace that door immediately because, I mean, <laughs> even a five-year-old could pull one of those doors off the hinges. So I'm gonna go through just a few ideas to keep your shed safe and the contents of it. I hope this has been helpful. It's just my experience of having a shed office. It, I mean, I couldn't do what I do without it, mainly because it's a recording studio, but it just, it's so handy having a space where you can just work, just get on and work. So if this has been useful, leave a comment, but if I've missed anything, please also leave a comment because I can always do more videos. I'm trying to do a bit of a series on a home shed because I think now it's coming to winter a lot of people may be considering it or considering insulating one just if you've got an idea if I think I've missed anything let me know and I'll try and do another video and please check out the other videos like how I keep it heated um, the security one I'm about to do how I insulate the floor wall ceiling got videos on everything shed based thank you for watching